So we were, we were talking about kind of how we got into it was talking about our many selves, how ideas have people or like our sense of self adjust depending on how we're, what we're doing and how we're feeling. And I, I think like the to consciousness work on yourself, like how if you, you have this void experience, you try to fill it, you start to notice how you're trying to fill it, how those different selves address the issue of of that void how what's what's the step to holding that void is it via another person or is it i mean there's there's practices that that work to accomplish that but like what's the the trajectory there on the individual level but just say that last the part again so what's the the path on the individual level from like, you can see that you have different selves. You can see that you have different ways of being that are good for some things and not good for others. That some result in nervousness and insecurity and anxiety because it's not a self that is big enough to hold those. So that's, that's like a transitional step as far as identifying that within yourself. What's, what's another step in kind of the trajectory towards consciousness? And it, it seems to me that like it's beginning to, to hold the space in which you would usually like fill with a compensatory self. Yeah. So what, is, what, is, what does that look like? Or what, what's a, a name or a, a description of that process? It's called the dimension approach. Tell me more. I mean, basically you said it. The It's to hold it, right? Which means to, to, to hold it with awareness and then ultimately, ideally, to hold it with consciousness. So that's why it comes back to this idea of aware of, as, or from. Initially, you're just aware either from it or as it, which are two different things. But if we say that, that there's no awareness of it yet, right? Just aware as it or from it. And so once you become aware of it, that's different, right? That's a huge shift now that there's an awareness of. And then I think to your question, it's like, okay, well, now what? And that's where this very subtle thing is so powerful. It's that if you sit and be aware of being aware of it, right? If you just sit and focus on it, if you allow your attention to be aware of it and just be aware of it, be aware of it, be aware of it, what starts to happen is to be aware of something. And what I mean is to be aware of the awareness of it breaks the identification with it. Your mind starts to differentiate the object that you're aware of from this felt experience of the self that's being aware of it. So again, you, you, we go in and out of these states all the time. If you're sitting and watching a, a TV program or a movie and you're in that state where you're just in the program, you've lost you're no longer orienting to yourself sitting there watching it. You're in there. Uh, all your attention is, is on, you know, what's going on in the, in the show. That's a certain state. And then, boom, you can come out and be aware of yourself sitting there watching the screen. It's that shift. Right. We just don't realize, you know, right now as you're sitting in your living room or your car or wherever, you're lost in a program. You're lost in a show. And if you bring attention to, wait a minute, the objects I'm seeing around me right now, the sounds I'm hearing, the emotions I'm feeling, the thoughts that are coming through my head, 
that's all the show. Who's the self watching this show, right? And, and to come out of that and actually start to feel a, a, a sense of some kind of self, some kind of, you know, even if, even if it just seems like a blankness, a blankness that seems to be removed from the show that you are immersed in. That's, that's that shift. And so back to your question, it's like if, if you are having a certain symptom, a certain kind of suffering, a certain struggle, this, this is where I drive my clients crazy because no matter what they bring up, I say, well, let's sit with that. You know, let's look at that. Let's hold that. Let's be conscious of that. Let's, let's, uh, let's just stay with that. <laughs> it's like, you know, the ego mind is like, no, I want to fix that. I'm actually trying to get away from that. I'm, you know, I didn't come here to look more closely at that. I came here to get free of it. And it's paradoxically, it's like, well, the way to get free of it, so to speak, is to bring attention to it to be aware of it so that you can break what you've been doing, which is to be aware as it. Well, even, even before that, if I can just inter interject that it's almost like you, something that's been really helpful to me that you've said is that you have to become even more aware as it first, that, that the initial resistance to being aware of it is that we don't want to be, it even though we already are and that this thing we're being we're aware as like to to incorporate it almost in a way that we're resisting to become aware of it yeah no doubt that's that's huge it's a more that that's going deeper into it and yes the oh sorry i thought that was yeah <laughs> that was like a, no it's good but it's it's going more sophisticated but it, but it's super important, like you're saying, because we we lose touch with consciousness, we get identified, entangled in the experience, in the object, in the occurrence, and then we split off from that. And so then, like you say, we're in this situation where actually the first step is to go back to becoming aware of, admitting that you are that, even though that's, you're not, ultimately you aren't that, but you have to go back and admit that, you know, that that's indeed where you are. And that, and to me, that's the process like in Christianity of, of admitting your sins, you know, of, of acknowledging I've fallen, you know, I'm under Satan's control. I'm, I am this, this bad, dark, evil thing. And it's like, well, whoa, wait a minute. That, you know, that doesn't sound like, uh, that, that's not very, uh, you know, PC these days to, you know, that sounds shaming and, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's like opposite. Yeah, definitely. Prevailing paradigm of let's all have positive thinking and just like, you know, everybody's good and everybody's right and, you know, just happy, happy, you know, positive reinforcement, no negative, no shaming. And it's like this idea of admitting, revealing how fallen, how stuck, how caught is a step in the right direction. Now it's an extremely dangerous step. You know, I get it that it's, it's very dangerous and it feels so horrible in a lot of cases, to, to actually move back towards, you know, to see the truth of, oh, my God, I'm, I feel murderous rage. Oh, my God, I, I feel and experience selfness in this really dark, twisted, awful way. I, I should kill myself in order to save the people around me. Like, people, people are confronted with that experience. When you start to, the, the more you have the ability to look with consciousness, 
consciousness sees the truth. And, and what it initially does is it shows oneself and or an other that darkness. And so to look with consciousness, to look with the eyeball of consciousness, which is the third eye, or the conscious mind, it reflects to the person's attention that darkness. And so there is massive backlash and resistance to that. So much so that these figures in history that did that, that were a shining light, so to speak, you know, got murdered for it. And that murdering happens to all of us at, at any, you know, every day in little ways where, where someone, someone shines the light of truth, someone brings consciousness, you know, to something. And then the ego reacts to that. And, you know, it causes turmoil within oneself when you do it to yourself. It causes turmoil within a relationship with your partner because one of you brought consciousness to something that that's indeed there, but neither of you really wanted to look at. But back to, like you said, it's it, to... There's so many maladies and symptoms that, that require first a going back, first a admitting, recognizing, allowing, I am this, in order to finally recognize, indeed, you aren't that. But the, but the first going back and allowing the, the experience of I am this, like you said, can't, you, you can't do it until you can do it. And what, what enables one to be able to do it, well, that's, a, again, that, that points back to the nature of, of the kind of work I do and the, the, uh, the various methodologies, you know, in psychology and in philosophy and in healing work, et cetera. They're, they're really, in a big way, they are ways of trying to help one be able to do that. It, you know, again, with the Christian idea the idea of confession, you know, it's easy. And, and I remember a period in my life, I just thought, you know, I, I remember sitting in church and, you know, it's seeming so cultish to me and, you know, it, everyone rise and now open your book to page, you know, 37 and now read these words. And then the words were like, I admit that I am unclean and blah, blah, blah. And I remember it, you know, being about eight years old and just feeling like, fuck this, man. Like this does, what the hell? It seemed, it seemed really messed up. <laughs> and I think it typically is pretty messed up, you know, but because there isn't an understanding of what that really was trying to get at, I think, you know, is that, that if we come together and, and all kind of admit, listen, we're all struggling, we're all lost in, in the dark here and we're, and uh, we're admitting this, imperfection and in the admittance of our unconsciousness it's an it's a methodology towards bringing awareness and consciousness to it it's not just to you know it's not just masochism and or it's not it's not just to uh be masochistic and and then uh play into the sadistic pleasure of the um, uh, some form of god yeah but it certainly can turn into that and has in tons of I think, I think that gets at kind of getting back to the original question of like first versus second person. And I just, you know, meeting that as far as work on yourself versus work with another person. There, there is a, a communal aspect to consciousness work to me because part of it is outside of ourself and that there is something to to at least having that experience mirrored or having that uh, sharing that experience with other people that adds to the meaning and helps navigate around the traps of 
of working on yourself to the point, you know, not turning so far inward that you forget your connection to other people. In your in your practice, what does bringing consciousness work? So, I mean, because you mentioned that, you know, that's a goal of the dimension approach and your methodology is what does it look like incorporating that into work with, with clients? If you say that the, if the model is that conscious attention is qualitatively different than ego experience, the, the primary thing I'm doing is that I'm orienting my attention from consciousness and then being with whatever the client's got going on in their psyche. And what that does is, uh, I mean, it does various things, but, but one of the things it does, which pertains to your question, I think, is that it brings the client the client's attention starts to shift towards them being conscious with that experience in their psyche. And the nature of that is, is to come out of, so to speak, or be disidentified or released from. So it's, it, it's you know, to use that inward and outward model that you're using there, to be lost within, meaning lost within the ego, consciousness literally brings you out. It brings you back to not only a con more, it not only shines light on what's within, it, it brings you back into a, uh, you know, an orientation where you recognize, oh, wait a second, there's, there's, there's within my personal experience but there's also a world out there and there's also others with their own inner experience and so it it brings it back into that kind of perspective yeah definitely i think like you said that there's a there's a qualitative we're, we're working on the assumption there's a qualitative difference between you know conscious attention and ego experience and that that bringing conscious attention to one-on-one -on -one work fosters the ability for or the opportunity for a client or the other person to experience the benefits of that, that separation from ego or that differentiation from ego. And it helps facilitate being able to disidentify something that they're in the throes of or that they're um, possessed by. Because it, it really gets back to what we've been talking about all along that, that otherwise, or that, with, without that, you could be treating a symptom rather than a cause. Or that there's some, like, there, obviously these things are working together. There's different things being treated at the same time. But part of the consciousness work is that it's like another layer of defense that's being deconstructed with the goal of healing. When you get deep enough into a, an issue, or, or if it's a deep enough issue, the nature of this stuff is that, okay, if, for example, if I'm trying to help you, what it comes down to is, okay, the problem exists in this place where you can't remain conscious there, right? Like that is the problem. And so then if the idea is, okay, if I can remain conscious there, I can be the light, right? If, if we're going to venture down into one of your caves, it's like, okay, I'll go with you, Jeff, into your cave, which, of course, we could get into that it's really our cave, blah, 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 right? But if we say into your... But it just gets confusing. Yeah, right. So if we're going to go into your cave, I, can, I have a light that will stay lit past where your light's staying lit. And so I can help you go down there and illuminate that cave and then whether you want to get into the shamanic model that and then we're going to save the piece of your soul that's trapped there or whether you want to get into the alchemical model that we're going to um you know there's going to be a transmutation that's going to happen there you know there's all these different models but if, if we just say that 
that we're going to illuminate it, if the goal is to illuminate it, you're going to be trusting me and my light. And so as we go deeper, not only are you going to get scared and start to wonder, you know, Lance, are you sure your light is going to stay on down here? Right? But, but at some point, it's going to get so dark other than my light that you're going to lose your ability to see yourself, any, any sort of control you have, you're just going to feel like you're at a certain point, a hundred percent dependent. Your survival down in that cave with all its dragons is dependent on my light, which is a terrifying experience. And it requires trust on a level that certainly gets into the guru territory. And, and that part of all this, you know, that, that, that if, it, if, if one's going through a deep enough or intense enough experience to where they're, hit, they're starting to get into that kind of territory of, oh my God, I am lost, I'm confused, and it's like, and Lance now has become, you know, we've wandered into this frickin' territory far enough to where I'm totally fucked if Lance is, uh, you know, if Lance is somehow, uh, you know, anything from like incapable to uh, ill-intended here, I'm totally fucked. And, it, and I'm, I'm aware that it's a huge responsibility on my end. And I'm aware that it is a level of trust that, you know, the, the, only, the only reason a person ends up trusting me in that way is because they're, they're finding themselves so completely lost to begin with, you know, that, I mean, if they can find a way out <laughs> that doesn't involve me, they'll take it, you know, meaning right. a way, a way that, that seems to be more in their own control. They'll take right. it. And, it. and it gets in this weird territory of like, did I take them into this lost place? Or were they, was that happening to them anyway? And of course, my intention is always to never try to lead someone deeper into a darkness, even, even if that seems like ultimately it would be good. I don't do that. I take what is up, so to speak, in the moment, in the room, when we're working. And I look at where they're at. I'm not trying to take them deeper. I'm trying to bring consciousness to what they're already, you know, where they're already at. And again, just, just work with it right there in the moment. But it certainly gets into that territory where they start to wonder, how did I get here? How did I get so lost? And of course the thought comes, did Lance frickin'? And of course, it, it, there is such a thing as someone taken somewhere with a negative intent, which is what the, you know, generally speaking, what the cult thing is. I think another important thing, and, and maybe I've said it already, but we use this swimming model, with, which I use a lot. If one's trying to get from one shore to another shore, which we're all doing, Right? We're, all, we're all, in various ways, certain parts of ourself were securely on a shore and we, we want to be there. But in other parts of ourselves, we desperately want to leave a certain shore. In other parts of ourselves, we are out in the middle of the frickin' ocean, lost, desperately trying to stay afloat. And we don't even know what the next shore is, usually. We're really, we really think we're trying to get back to the Sure, we left, but we're all doing this for each other again, moment to moment. In certain ways, we're doing this in this meaning. If I can swim in a certain water, and then I see that, let's say, Jeff, you're, you're struggling to swim in that water, that particular water. And the idea being that there are these infinite different bodies of water, right? But if I see Jeff's struggling to stay afloat in that particular 
body of water. And if I can swim in that water, then I will go out and join you in that water, which is the empathy piece. And I will initially hold you up, right? I will swim over. I will jump in that water, swim over, and say, grab onto me, and I'll hold you up. But then from there, it's okay. Now, I got to teach you to swim in this water. Again, we all can swim in certain water. And so we all can help other people to swim in the waters that we've learned to swim in. So recognizing which particular body of water is someone struggling in, and if we can swim in that water, okay, then we can be of service. And then just the other piece. I'm not really in the, in the business of tell me what shore you want to get to and I'll, and I'll take you from the shore you're at to that shore. I, I'm more like the Coast Guard, you know, it, it, that's in the business of if, you're, if you find yourself drowning in a certain body of water, call me and I'll try to see, you know, see if that's a water that I know how to swim in. You know what I mean? Which is different than, than uh, I'll take you from here to there. If you want to learn more about the Dimension Approach, please visit dimensionapproach.com.